in the mid-1950s after my father was discharged from the United States Air Force. They came to Cleveland, Tennessee from West Virginia to in order to enter into Bible college at Lee College. My mother baked or worked at the Church of God publishing house. My dad baked donuts in order to pay their way to go through school. They were looking forward to graduation. The person who was running the publishing house helped my dad schedule his first revival in Slab Fort, West Virginia, just after graduation. But as graduation began to draw near, my mother came down with a mysterious sickness. She went to the doctor. They couldn't find what was wrong. She continued to lose weight. Couldn't keep anything on her stomach. Day after day after day, week after week, until she, she lost down to 89 pounds. My dad, fearful for her life, took her to West Virginia to the home of her mother while he came back to Cleveland and picked up his diploma and picked up what few belongings they had and went back to West Virginia. As my dad got back into West Virginia, into the home of his mother-in-law, he discovered that they had had to hospitalize his wife, my mother, under the care of a family physician. My dad dropped everything and he raced to the hospital. The doctor said to my father, Bill, I don't know what's happening. It's greater than us. I don't know what the answer is. So as the visiting hours came to an end, my dad went back to his mother-in-law's house and went down into her basement. Shut the door with nothing but darkness. And he cried. And he cried. And he cried until he was heaving and there was no more tears. And as he was crying out to God, my dad said, Mark, this has never happened before and it's never happened since. But as I was crying out to God, feeling like I was hemmed in, all of a sudden, the dark room filled up with light. And he said, I heard an audible voice. The only time he's ever heard an audible voice. And the audible voice said to him, everything is going to be all right. My dad immediately fell to sleep. The first sleep he had four nights. He got up the next morning. He got dressed and he went over to the hospital. As soon as the visiting hours began, he walked into my mother's room. And she was sitting up in the bed eating ice cream. And the doctor met him at the door and said, Bill... I don't understand it, but everything is going to be all right. My brothers and sisters, I'm not minimizing the pain that you feel. I'm not minimizing the threat that you are facing. But I'm here to tell you, you may not hear an audible voice. You may not see with your physical eyes the angels of the Lord, but I believe you can walk home tonight with an assurance that everything is going to be all right. God is going to have the last word. I feel that of the Lord that we should pray right now. I want you to stand where you are if you don't mind and just lift up your hands to the Lord and begin to prepare your heart for what God is going to do in your life. Oh Lord tonight. I thank you. That the enemy will not have the last word. You will have the last word. 
I thank you, oh God, though darkness surrounds me, even the darkness begins to shine for this day. Darkness and light are alike unto you. I thank you tonight that there is no weapon that is formed against us that will prosper. That every tongue that rises up in judgment against us, it shall be condemned. For these are the heritage of the Lord. These belong to you tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus over them now. I plead the blood of Jesus over their homes. I plead the blood of Jesus over their places of employment. I plead the blood of Jesus over this church. I plead the blood of Jesus over Orange County. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of the community of Christmas. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of Kissimmee and over all of the greater Orlando metro. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of the state of Florida tonight. Oh, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, help is on the way. Help is on the way. <laughs> Just like when Jabesh Gilead was attacking, God sent his servant to say, by this time tomorrow, you will have help. Help is on the way tonight. Help is on the way. I want everyone under this pavilion who would say to me, Pastor, I need the assurance that everything is going to be all right because right now nothing is right. Everything is wrong. I need to know that I'm not alone. If you're in a battle of any kind, if you feel hemmed in, if you feel pressured, if you feel limited, if you feel in any way encumbered tonight, maybe it's a daughter or a son that you are so worried about. Maybe it's a mom or a dad. Maybe it's your own life and ministry. Maybe you find yourself in the throes of addiction and it just seems like it's more powerful on you than anything and you can't get loose from it. I'm going to ask you right now in Jesus' name just to come from where you are and join me right here today. We are going to pray. We're going to pray. In fact, our musicians are here. Others may want to come and be prepared to lead us in worship. But if you need God to step in and come to your rescue, I want you to come right now in Jesus' name and just meet me right here. Just come from where you are. Come from where you are. Come from where you are. Don't feel a bit inhibited. Just come from where you are. Don't be ashamed. Every one of us has faced times of battle. Just come from where you are, please. Come from where you are. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come from where you are. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. Just come from where you are. Brother man, I know you have seen the Lord come through on many occasions. Who else in this, in this place tonight? You have seen God step in at times when you didn't see that there was going to be any way and God made a way. Can you, have, can you give a witness to that? You've seen God do that. He can do it again. He can do it for you tonight. Anyone else? I'm going to invite our pastors who are here. I'm going to invite the pastor's spouses. I'm going to invite evangelists. I'm going to invite the people of God who would like to be a part of this prayer to come and just stand around them as a wall of fire. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said in Zechariah, He would be about you as a wall of fire. There's a lot of people standing around you, but that's nothing compared to the angels of the Lord that are around you. You are not alone in this. You don't have to be afraid. God's going to have the last word. This isn't going to last forever. This is going to come to an end. God is going to bring victory. Right now, just lift up your hands to the Lord right now. Just lift them up to the Lord. Lord, as we pray one for another now, 
I'm asking you that change will begin to break. I'm asking today that the eyes will begin to open, spiritual eyes, and we will be able to see your victory in Jesus' name. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them now. With Jesus is in the room. Miracles start to happen. When Jesus is in the room. And miracles happen. They're happening. They're happening. When Jesus
Let's lift up our hands to the Lord. Let's quote the word of God together. Say this after me. I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded. He is able to keep what I have given to him. I am persuaded that nothing will separate me from his love. I am convinced that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now let's give praise to God, shall we do that? Let's magnify him and glorify him together tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Brother and Sister Simmons, I love you so very much. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for the privilege to be here. My goodness, incredible. What gifts the Sanctuary Church is blessed with each and every day, each and every week. We honor you. We're so grateful. The musicians were amazing, incredible tonight. I'm so grateful. God bless all of you. Um, Pastor, yes. Put your hands together for Bishop J.D. Simmons as he comes tonight and gives us the benediction. He's going to close us out in prayer and he's going to bless the food. I want to let you know tomorrow night we have our state bishop, which is... Bishop Tim Brown will be with us tomorrow night, and Brother uh, Mark Todd's son, Zach Todd, will be leading us in worship. And I'm going to ask Pastor J.D., will you pray over Dr. Mark's wife? She, he had to fly her home because she wasn't feeling well as you dismiss the service. Church, will you stretch your hands? Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. We pray healing for Sandra Kay. We pray, Heavenly Father, for his sons, Austin and Ryan. We pray, Lord, that you would bless him as he labors in the word for your people. Father, tonight, go home with all of us. And Lord, let your presence dwell in our homes and bring us back tomorrow night expecting to receive from you. In Christ's holy name, amen. Thank you.